So thank you guys and girls for uh, for tuning in to my podcast. Optimize your body, and I really appreciate it. So um, don't forget to subscribe to my to my uh, to my podcast, and also uh, if you could leave me a five star rating and review. Should have said that at the end, but that's all good. Anyway, first and foremost, I have my uh, my special guest on the uh, the show tonight, and uh, it's my friend Sean McKinroy. Uh, it goes by the name of Apex Trem Society on uh, at Apex Trem Society on Instagram, and he's a personal trainer at the gym I work at, and I also live with him for four months. So we've got some funny stories to tell and some some interesting stuff, obviously fitness and and health related. So uh, how are you doing today, mate? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me on the show. No problem. No problem. So yeah, Sean is um, he's a very good trainer, and that's why he's on the he's on the show, and he he's very knowledgeable. And um, this is why I wanted to kind of pick his brains, if you like, and get an insight into the kind of stuff he does. So, um, yeah, what motivated you? One of the first questions I wanted to ask was, um, like, what motivated you to to become a personal trainer um, and, and get into, you know, kind of step foot into the fitness industry? Um, well, look, I'm 28 now. I started, started lifting weights when I was 13. Um, I think it was just a natural progression, you mm-hmm. know, and, all through high school, lifting weights, enjoying it. I was always naturally strong, so it was something I was good at. You know, mm. you tend to gravitate towards things you're good at. Um, lifting weights it was something I was good at, as simple as it may sound. Um, I left school, didn't really have much, I suppose, direction. Didn't really know what I wanted to do with myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I, wasn't a, I wasn't a dummy, um, but I didn't know what I wanted to do in terms of uh, university degrees or anything like that. So um, just got a job shortly after that. Started doing my PT course because I wanted to do something a bit um, more with my life. Um, a few job opportunities came my way, which put the personal training on the back burner. Mm-hmm. From that, um, uh, opportunities at that at that job sort of fell away, and, and personal training became a bit more of a uh, bit more of an option time wise. Um, sure. I took that on, and yeah, never looked back. So. I don't just—I just felt like it was a natural thing, right? So training since I was a young age, much like mm-hmm. yourself, and uh, enjoyed it. Enjoyed uh, helping people, sort of just like little bit by little bit, as you're sort of showing friends that are new to the gym, obviously starting at such a young age, and then as other friends are picking it up when they're 18, 19, 20, things like that, and already been doing it for a good half a dozen years or so, uh, then doing my PT course to then become accredited to then train other people just made sense, sure. right? So. Yeah. Um, there's it's, something you're passionate about obviously well, yeah, now you've always been into your training I, and fitness so. I find it hard to call it work yeah you know same. because I, it took me a long time uh, when I first started being a PT full time to refer to it as oh I'm going to work mm. I'm off to work or I'm, I'm doing this for work exactly I'm just, just going to the gym you know and on that note yeah I've just had something spring to mind now which is uh, you know <clears throat> without saying it too bluntly there's a lot of uh, trainers out there who are not not very passionate from what mm. I've gathered um, actually the gym we're based in is really good I find the trainers there are, you know most of them are really passionate and mm. it's a good vibe there but uh, I find a lot of people come into into it as a personal trainer for the wrong reasons you know for the money mm. and, I, and I think they kind of are going to end up disappointed because mm. as you said it feels the same for me now you know I'm extremely passionate about it and uh, it's something I really enjoy doing mm. and also actually I started lifting weights um, I think about the age of 15 mm-hmm. so a young age so, and I've always played sports, like yourself, you used to play yeah, footy. Yeah, a lot of league, a lot of athletics. Yeah. Rugby league, sorry, I'll say, not footy. A lot of, a lot <laughs> of, um, a lot of different things, you know, probably much like yourself. Anyone Same. that's, anyone that's uh, grows up playing a sport, they typically don't just do the one sport. They try to handle lots of different sports, right? That's right, right? yeah, so, for sure. Mm. Same, yeah, so I played rugby, you know, football, squash, as I got a bit older, mm. numerous different sports, and always been active, always been, you know, a sporty individual, mm. and then... Same as myself, I started lifting weights uh, at the age of about fifteen, not quite as young as you. So that's your secret, then, yeah. So yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna get to that. How the hell are you so much years. bigger? Those two years, isn't it? So yeah, so basically, I started lifting weights at fifteen and never looked back. Really, um, really enjoyed it. And built muscle really fast because obviously, mm. as you know, I don't know how you responded, but um, when I was like, I think for me it was like sixteen, seventeen, I really started stacking some muscle on quite mm-hmm. a fast rate. And obviously, when you're younger, I guess your testosterone levels are a bit higher. Mm. And then, uh, 1920, uh, I actually done my first uh, level two fitness instructor qualification. Uh, by the age of about 20, I was a qualified PT. So I've been doing it for like um, over 10 years now. 
but uh, yeah, we both love it. So that's a good thing about it, isn't it? Mm. Pas- passion and and uh, obviously we're both confident with our message and what we know and confidence. Well, I think you've got to be right. Like key, yeah. said, a lot of people aren't necessarily passionate. They come into it for the wrong reasons. For sure. And they're going to be bitterly disappointed. I think like any business, mm. if you go into any business, uh, any venture, not passionate about it and seeking more a financial gain mm-hmm. rather than a... Uh, a service or purpose or, or relative to what it is you're, you're trying to do That's exactly right you're going to get found out pretty quick you exactly. may you may do okay uh, like a lot of PTs we see kind of yeah. like flounder around and, yeah. and, and do okay but in order but, to excel and really yeah. gain and really give value isn't it that's, that's the most that's important right. thing isn't it I was just about to say to, to the to the client to the person um, that you sort of paying for your service if sure. there's no passion there or there is passion there it's very easily detectable yeah definitely that's why you see the people that are passionate my, you and myself are busier than yeah. those that aren't that's because right because people are and you mentioned confidence people are attracted to those qualities that's right, right. so exactly. you, if you go to see anyone for any service yeah you might see them once you know you give them a give them a go but if they're they don't really seem into it yeah, then, that's right. Well, why would you go back? Exactly, you know? and that's so. one one of the key things, isn't it? Is you know practicing what you preach, mm. essentially, and you know looking at the kind of training you do and and the knowledge you have. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you know it, it. Obviously, you know your stuff, which which goes a long way. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the note of uh, you know what kind of you know basically you need to be like I said, practicing what you preach. Being in shape helps a lot, uh, you know, when you're being a trainer. Obviously, when you're a trainer, people look at you, you know. Mm. You, you, sh- you need to look healthy, at least relatively healthy, you know. But um, in terms of the type of training you do, because, I mean, we both manage to, you know, maintain a good physique all year round, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, we're not really kind of on or off, really, like mm. you get a lot of people doing. You see their uh, weight fluctuating quite a lot, yeah. you know. Um, but, yeah, I notice with yourself, you're in shape you know, all year round and you've got a lot of muscle mass and you stay, you stay lean as well. Mm-hmm. Um, how, I mean, what kind of training? You've got me on that one. I've got, you, you, on got, that you, on that one. I've got you on that you one. I've got you on that one. He's blushing now. You can't really see this, but <laughs> you know, what kind of, I've noticed you do um, mm-hmm. a mixture of things, but primarily what I like about you and the things you do is uh, in the gym is the technique and mm-hmm. you're very honed in on, um, you know, lifting weights with good technique and doing it properly, yeah. um, as opposed to just lifting with your ego. Yeah. On another note, I saw you. I saw you pull in like two hundred and fifty kilos, which mm-hmm. in pounds, the note like five hundred and fifty, six hundred pounds the other day for a few reps, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that was. So, what's your secret? Not to not to <laughs> sort of beat that myself, but that was that was lighter than what I definitely can do. Um, just put it out there. That was a bit demoralizing. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's the secret? Well, look, put it this way: genetics plays a huge role. Mm-hmm. Like I've recently started training my mum. And she's 58 years old. And put it this way, the first time she did, she'd had a little bit of resistance training experience, like like just a little basic stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, never any real barbell movements, certainly no deadlifts. Uh, the first time we deadlifted, a few months ago now, she lifted 70 kilos for five reps with relative ease after quite a bit of volume leading up to it because wow. slowly progressing in weight and I wasn't doing it sort of unsafely it's my mum right? right so I'm just like making sure she was doing it right so it's your mum with a killer genetics then okay well that's right <laughs> you know what I mean and it was well. like oh right I used to, used to thank my dad for it that's it but um, well genetics plays a huge role genetics like, plays a huge role like, yeah for sure we, you'll never I'll never be I've always been thick you know mm. you said about um, yeah sort of, heavy set kind yeah, of yeah you know, yeah yeah like, even when I was a kid if I was a when I was young yeah I was always a big kid yeah that's um, right and so, like I said, when I when I hit hit sort of um, that uh, early teen years and started yeah. to, to lift some weights, I responded well mm. to resistance training. That's right. Um, and like anything, especially as a kid, you tend to gravitate towards things that you're good at. Mm. So I was good at lifting weights. I enjoyed it. I found a response. I was training with my cousin and his friends who were a few years older. I was keeping up, if not bettering mm. them in a lot of things. So mm. I was like, well, um, this is. This is um, this is something I'm I'm good at, you know. This mm-hmm. is something I'm excelling at. Um, so when you talk about sort of lifting heavy weights and, and things like that, or, or lifting with your ego rather. Yeah, for sure. It's something I used to do. Yeah, you, see that you quite don't a lot. start as a 13 year old uh, in the gym lifting with your 16 year old cousin and, and, and friends at the same age. 
and not lift with your ego. That's it. That's yeah. what you do. You know, you, you just have, get sucked you in. Have a bit of a laugh. And exactly. It's, it's, the, it's the it's uh, the it's the the alpha male kicks well, in, doesn't right. it? And the you competitive know, nature. Of that in it, and it makes male you, ego. You don't know uh, what you don't know. So for sure, I, I you don't know if you're doing something right or wrong. Mm. You just you're lifting a weight. You see a big guy do it. You see uh, maybe it's a video online of someone doing it, mm. or an image in uh, Fitness and Muscle Fitness magazine, for instance. For sure. And you replicate it. You do what Ronnie Coleman's doing. That's or, right. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what, is, what these famous well, yeah, bodybuilders well, doing? Well, yeah. Well, but well, these well, are genetic well, anomalies, right? So these exactly. are like within a small one percent less than that of people mm. um, who have these freaky genetics. I don't know which one it is. I think it might be uh, Ronnie Coleman. He just literally does machines. I think he didn't even lift uh, free weights. Well, One call, or was it Phil Heath? Who, no, no, it'd be Phil Heath. Phil, Phil Heath. That's, that's why. Yeah, you just Heath. see him on a hammer strength machine. Well, pretty Ryan much. Well, Ronnie Coleman used to be um, like a, a good powerlifter. I'm not yeah. sure what his numbers were, but yeah, like, yeah, that's why I got mixed up. School, but, yeah, yeah. No, Phil, Phil Heath just literally that's what machines. Who just show how much you call him the gift? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Obviously, he takes a few other sort of yeah, that's it. And I think that's what it comes down to nowadays, isn't it? Like you know, how what supplements they take in and the genetics, obviously. Well, yeah, genetics plays a huge role. But they have to put the work in. I'm not taking that away from them. They have to put some serious blood, sweat, and tears in. Of course not. But it's um. Yeah, well, you look at the physiques nowadays. Yeah, completely um, different to back to in Arnie's day. Uh, they're the golden era, as it's called. Definitely. And it, like we're the same people. Yeah, right? for we, sure. We we're still humans. We haven't evolved. Yeah. Uh, as humans, that much in the last. But they, they actually years. don't look human anymore, do but they? They, they look they're, so so different. And right? it's the shape so, of their muscles. They're, they're like more bubbly, kind of like just, um, really it's, artificial it's, looking, but still looks awesome, but not the, quite as. It's just so grotesquely large. That's right. It is. It's just bizarre, isn't it? You like. You look back at it's extreme. Yeah, you look back at some images of sort of Arnie, for instance, running along mm. the beach, and you're like, he just looks like a really big dude. That's athletic, right, yeah, yeah. like a big dude, exactly. right? Um, Whereas, like, you'd see him someone like that nowadays, you're like, wow, he's big. Yeah. Whereas, when you see a modern day bodybuilder mm. of the same caliber, yeah, but nowadays, and you'd see it would it would draw attention. In a very different way. Yeah, it would for be sure. Yeah, that's almost right. Almost like even to see them running. If you saw them running, that would draw attention, wouldn't it? Saying, <laughs> you'd probably, probably eat your hat if you I saw them running alone, wouldn't it? No, I don't think they could, mate. The ten meter dash. Um, but yeah, talking <laughs> talking about genetics. Um, yeah, interesting because I I basically started training my uh, my sister, my younger sister, mm. a few years back, and she responded really fast. Like I mean, within four to five weeks, yeah. just insane. And then she was doing bikini competitions and within about six months, you know. Mm. So uh, goes to show genetics definitely. I think lows the gun. Oh. But then I think it's all the other key factors and right uh, elements yeah. that come yeah. into it. Yeah. So you know the lifestyle, what mm. you eat, which is what I'm going to come to now. I live with Sean um, in this beautiful house for mm. about uh, four months, mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean you eat uh, quite a lot of meat, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. He, he likes his meat. He's a, it's, carnival. A, it's carnival, typical Australian. Um, doesn't eat a great deal of veg. No. Um, but never have. You know, you you're fit, you're healthy, you're strong, mm. you look great. Um, so. It goes to show that obviously I'm a big advocate on how important veg is, how it makes me feel, oh. but everyone's completely different and you're in tune with your body. I'm, I'm no, I'm and you no don't eat fool. a great deal of veg, do you? No, I'm no fool. <laughs> like, I know vegetables are good, but it's just one of those things that. Sweet um, potato you eat mine, don't you? Oh, so at least you get something. A lot of sweet potato. A lot of avocado. <laughs> avocado, he likes an avocado as well. It's green I eat, but it looks, it's just one of those things. Even as a kid growing up, I was so, I don't know, just so against eating vegetables. And I just never grew out of it. It's actually mm. annoying because I don't know if a psychological sort of That's thing. That's right, yeah. I, I think it's a habit. I, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I, I want to eat it. And, yeah. and I have. But it's I've just repulsive, through, yeah. I've gone through stages where like, I force myself to eat like, broccoli and stuff like that. And it's, it's, I find it hard to I, I suppose the, the, the adaptation I, I, element. Almost like... Oh, yeah, yeah, even. Yeah, yeah a, lot, a lot of people get that, you know. But um, okay. it's like... It's just all, a psychological. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you used to eat it when you were younger. Like um, a lot of people... The studies have shown that people who eat it from a young age have got a lot more chance, obviously, eating mm. it as they grow up. Yeah. Uh, but that's not the case for you. You must have had a bit of time off. But it's the adaptation thing mm. there, isn't it? It's like your body's no longer adapted to eating it. You'd have to kind of build the habits up again, wouldn't you? But, I mean, everything seems to be functioning well. So, I mean, although I big well, up veg a lot... Um, look, no, look, again, I'm, I'm not I'm not ignorant of the fact that, like... Um, yeah, you know exactly what it does for you. Yeah, I know what it does. That's hence why I, I forced myself to eat it in the past. But yeah. it's just not... Um, it's, it's, it's just not something that... Um, I like eating, mm. and, and like you said, I, I've I've come to where I am now at nearly thirty years of age and survived quite well without it. So exactly, um, I don't eat. Uh, to, like obviously, I'm I'm lenient 
as much as I want to be, but at the same time, I don't want to be too lenient. So, absolutely, uh, yeah. in, in regards to eating, like you're still mindful of getting stuff. nutrients in, yeah, totally. exactly. And you know what? You're in tune with your body, so mm. it's almost like um, intuitive, isn't it? Yeah, you know, you don't have to think too hard about it. Um, you just go I'm for sure what your body function, wants. I'm sure I would function much better with it, but at the same time, I'm not functioning poorly without it. That's so, exactly right. So what, <laughs> you don't want to force yourself to eat it then, yeah, it? But yeah, no, I listened to an interest, interesting podcast with, uh, I think his name was Dr. Sean Baker. It was on the Joe Rogan. I think I sent you the uh, yeah, screenshot. Yeah, you mentioned it, but I haven't had a chance to have listen to, to it. Yeah, check it out. Um, the carnivore diet, right? right? So there's a lot of people now around the world who are um, essentially eating just meat. Mm. No vegetables, nothing. Um, and obviously for me, I was like, come on, this has got to be a bit of a load of BS, yeah, mm. bullshit. But... I mean, the guy is, I think he's like 50. I mean, he's in incredible shape, mm. super fit and healthy. And he's very, very knowledgeable. And he could back up, um, you know, all the kind of stuff he was talking about. Mm. And yeah, it's just very interesting because the, you can get so much, uh, such a wide range of nutrients from just eating uh, different types of meat alone. But I wouldn't have thought it would be sustainable just to eat meat. Because this guy was initially on the um, ketosis diet, right? Yes. So guys and girls who don't know what that is, it's essentially just eating primarily protein and fats mm. uh, and, and vegetables, right? So not eating a great deal of uh, carbohydrates or hardly any whatsoever. It's like zero, yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So for example, you'd be eating a lot of uh, meats, uh, lots of veg, like butters. You, you can eat butter and cheese and dairy stuff. Uh, as I say, a lot of meats, you know, avocados, um, you know, nuts, all that kind of stuff, olive oil but very, very low carbs. And this guy then, uh, he switched over then to just eating meat. And, um, you know, and he's, he's prescribed this diet to a lot of people who've had health issues. Mm -hmm. And it's actually um, alleviated any kind of ailments, ailments they've had. And, and yeah, people are breaking like uh, personal bests uh, in the gym and stuff. And it was just, it blew me away. I thought to myself, after all of this kind of preaching about veg and stuff, mm. I was thinking, I would like to challenge myself and, uh, and give it a go for a month maybe and just see how I get on. Joe Rogan's trying it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm tempted, but um, it just made me think, you know, because you eat a lot of red meat, right? Oh, look, uh, I eat it Meat very, in general. I, I, I eat, yeah, it's quite a wide variety of meat. So yeah. You're quite self-aware though in terms of you probably don't overeat red meat, do you? No, no, yeah. I don't. No, I don't. I try not to. I try and like... Say I try and eat it, eat it a couple of times a day, but like I do have several meals a day, so and none of them are overly large. So if they, you know, it might be a couple hundred grams of mm. um, of beef or something. So depending on my day, or depending on what I have available or yeah. what's cooked and things like that, I I might have a couple red meat dishes a day. Mm. Um, there might be a few days off, for instance, or something mm. like that. So, um, but yeah, I, I definitely understand that. Things like like fish or, or uh, white meat is much more easily digestible. Yeah, um, for sure. Something like red meat, so I try not to have that too much. Or yeah, lady, but then at the, at the same time, though, let's let's not let's not. Yeah, that, that's totally I totally agree with that. But the, the guy was saying as well. I mean, um, there's a lot to be said as far as it. You know, people say it takes uh, red meat can take years to go for your gut and, and so on and so forth. It's debatable um, yeah, at I, most. I, but I, there's so many. Let's look at the wide range of minerals and, mm. and micronutrients that you get from red meat. Mm. Uh, alone, you know, B12, magnesium, all the rest of it. There's a long list, and not to mention the type of fats as well. So you get mm. you get saturated fat, but if you get you know good quality grass fed beef, mm. I think the majority of it is actually mono and saturated fat anyway, which helps you break down the micronutrients and yeah. stuff. So it's interesting. I mean, that what the health? I think you watched that what the health? Uh, yeah. So then a podcast on that. Yeah, that was that. Uh, yeah, bigging up the vegan thing, diet. Things like that. They're very one sided. So mm. that's exactly right. You don't take like, anything like that with a pinch of salt, right? Definitely. And that's it. And they were just saying about um, in, in Hong Kong, for example, the people who have the longest life expectancy on the planet mm. live in Hong Kong and they eat around about 40% more meat than the Americans. Uh, is and, that, is and that fish though? No, this is, red, so this is red meat. Sorry, not oh. meat. This is, this is red meat. Oh, yeah, okay. 40, yeah. And they're finding now that actually the people who, who live the longest... And the majority of them do have red meat on a regular basis. So yeah. it's because of all the, the stuff or the kind of a lot of false information essentially that we've been bombarded with mm. in terms of red meat causing uh, causing cancer, heart disease and all the rest of it. Yeah. But refined sugar has a lot to answer for, doesn't it? Mm. You know, Because uh, I was going to come to the fact that um, try and get your take on the because you've obviously witnessed it yourself being a trainer and stuff like that. Um, you know, we're living in an age now where it's actually an epidemic mm -hmm. uh, in terms of chronic illnesses. Uh, diabetes, I think I mentioned this on my last podcast, but about uh, one third of America now has, uh, I think Australia and the UK are not too far behind, but one third of America now has diabetes mm -hmm. or uh, pre-diabetes. That's like 100 million Americans. And yeah, well, um, yeah. yeah it's, 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 quite a, it's quite a compelling compelling topic. But then 
we don't seem to get told with these studies. We don't seem to get the uh, get informed on the fact that you know a lot of these people who they've done tests on who eat a lot of red meat also don't generally look after themselves. You know, they're, mm. they're finding now the studies they've done. Well, yeah, that's the thing, right? They'll, they'll often come out with studies and, and stats and figures um, to represent one thing, like you said about these diabetes and, and, and issues with sugar, uh, and, and, and sort of and coincided with with people that eat red meat. Mm. Well, also vice versa sorry they get issues with uh, red meat and they're not taking into account the people um, that, that are affected are also over consuming so many other things yeah it's exactly like, not getting enough sleep sedentary yeah, job it, all of these things exactly, all of these factors right? yeah. it's, it's hard it's hard to get clean studies in regards to how one food like that um, what type of food being red meat and how that like individually affects mm, people because right. it's like when people eat a meal of of a steak um, steak veg and some potato for instance mm, yeah. and people are like oh, I don't eat white potato because it's high GI and things yeah. like that and it's like well yeah but it's, that's high GI but the, the steak is really low mm. and then you've got some fibrous vegetables over there you're just consuming that whole meal in one go that's so right. it's 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 being broken down together. Mm, so you exactly. can't look at an individual um, food source yeah. when it's been eaten with many others exactly. and, and and go, oh, yeah, but that, that white potato is bad. So yeah. It's like, yeah, but you're having a nice like, grass-fed exactly. um, cut of beef and, That's and right. some, some uh, roasted sort of uh, you know, vegetables, cauliflower, yeah. and broccoli, carrots, it's or something it's like a nutrient-dense meal, isn't it? Exactly, right. Yeah. And, but Not having fries, like, for example, a lot of these people, most likely, you know, um, having fries or having you know, like fries, which have been obviously fried in vegetable oil, mm. trans fats, and then they're having all these different sauces and whatnot they're adding to the meal. Uh, not to mention the fact they probably, you know, they could drink alcohol on a regular basis. Like I said earlier, a lot of them have got a sedentary lifestyle where they've got office jobs, they're not exercising enough. All these factors come into it. So the bottom line is, I think meat, I mean, um, the other studies the guy was mentioning is that like vegetarians or vegans um, or meat eaters and this is people who eat red meat um, regular now mm-hmm. um, there's no difference in life expectancy really it was around about, around about the same there was no difference like the, the, the study sh- uh, I think it was actually done in Australia this study it was like seven and a half thousand people maybe that was another study don't quote me on that because um, <laughs> these, these, these people are dead I, yeah so that um, would have been a tough one I know you read a lot of stuff so you just, <laughs> just, just mashing studies together. I know I'm just mixing them up now I'm just, I'm just basically just pre-started go with it, here just go with it that's the it people won't know the I, just, I just like the word studies it makes yeah. me sound really intellectual yeah, you know studies <laughs> Any, uh, you just back up any claim you want to make with that's it. exactly well, it studies proven it's, oh right <laughs> But yeah, no, anyway, so yeah, they found that there's no difference in, in life expectancy and lifespan of people, you know, vegans, vegetarians, uh, or people who eat red meat on a regular basis. I think the, uh, you know, the microbiome and the gut flora, essentially all the bugs with inside your body um, will adapt to whatever you kind of, that's, that's what the body is, right? It's, a, it's an think, adaptation machine. I think, I think you're it wants very to right. Because you, you think about sort of the diet that I have versus the diet that you have being very vegetable yeah, yeah. dense versus not being myself. And um, and the way ones and it, but I've always been that way, you mm. know. So you that's look, right. you look at how the body develops and how it grows. That's right. So you um, built your microbiome up over the time. Over correct. time, so that's, that's your body's functioning perfectly fine. Again, it's like only, that. It's only a hypothesis, but yeah. that's what I put it down to, right? Exactly. Um, if you were a regular vegetable eater, consumer of a variety of vegetables from a young age, mm. and you maintain that till sort of early adulthood, and yeah. then for some reason you're like no I'm not eating vegetables anymore mm. and you got rid of the vegetables I'm sure you'd have some sort of health ramifications mm, uh, sure. negative health ramifications versus I suppose someone like myself it makes sense yeah it does um, for sure and again, the, I'm not the, completely up to speed with things like that but it yeah. sounds logical to me I know and um, yeah the conclusion is that you know generally no, m- most of the part no, yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> there we are that's the that's the uh, that's that's Sean's message right that's there. The take that's, the take <laughs> that's the takeaways for the day. No, but the bottom line is you kind of for the most part, um, you know, you're, you're eating whole foods, mm-hmm. so you don't. You, you may have some processed foods here and there, right? But what would you say in oh. terms of percentage, like seventy percent? Oh no, eating healthy. Foods, Not eating healthy. I mean, like seventy, eighty percent of the time. Um, I think I'm hitting about eighty percent, roughly eighty, ninety percent healthy foods. But um, I think that's what it goes down to. Be like, yeah, maybe twenty percent at most. Mm. You know what I mean? Because. Yeah. Um, I just, it's just like sweet potato or rice is some sort of carbohydrate source mm-hmm. and it's some sort of like protein source. It's either some sort of fish, it's some chicken or some lamb or some beef. That's right. Um, uh, some sort of like 
pasta, I suppose. Sometimes there's another carb source, which I have mm. in, in addition to other things. Yeah. But in terms of processed, the, the closest that I would have processed in terms What about of the ice cream you used to keep in the freezer when I lived with you? Oh, well, you <laughs> that was only on weekends. The one you used to eat. The one I used to uh, tuck into, yeah? Uh, the closest <laughs> I'd have on a regular basis might be the, the store-bought tomato sauce. Yeah. Um, but like I've looked at that, and it's like yeah. sodium would probably be the worst exactly. thing on that. But like, in saying that, like obviously, I need some level of sodium in my diet. Yeah, 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 sure. And everything else, um, meat um, and carbohydrate. Yeah, and so going back to carbohydrates, just to clear things up to people now, because a lot of people are kind of confused and a bit, um, you know, delusional when it comes to what carbohydrates are. Mm-hmm. And obviously, there's all this talk about, you know, how carbohydrates essentially contribute to. Uh, you know, obesity, sugar, essentially. Carbohydrates is another word for sugar. There's different types. Mm-hmm. So Sean was then mentioning, uh, you know, sweet potato, rice, those kind of things, pasta. And they are a form of like starchy carbohydrates, right? Which, mm-hmm. um, you know, pasta contains a lot of gluten, for example. Uh, rice, rice and sweet potato, you won't find any gluten in. So, so generally, I mean, personally, if I do eat starchy kinds of carbohydrates, it'll be sweet potato, rice, or sometimes quinoa, but I'm not a massive fan of quinoa although it is really nutritious so I'll stick to them because they're, they're, there's no gluten in them and I, I, gluten doesn't fully agree with me um, but for, for people out there who are trying to uh, you know lose body fat and stuff like that um, vegetable is a type of carbohydrates vegetables um, but they're plant carbohydrates right so you're not going to Basically, your body's not going to release uh, a load of insulin and it doesn't break them down the same way essentially so uh, you are going to have a lot more of a chance storing body fat if you're continuously eating foods like bread, pasta, cereals. Mm. Um, so I always talk about vegetables, but there's plenty of nutrients in vegetables, obviously. But if you can eat them with your meals as opposed to the starchy carbs, and when you do have the starchy carbs, try and have stuff like you were saying you eat primarily sweet potato and rice and oh, a bit well, of pasta. Sweet, yeah? sweet potato and, uh, and rice, you put rice in the rice cooker and the sweet potato in the oven. Uh, to cook it and it lasts in the fridge for like a week you know mm. like I, I don't like to leave it any longer than that so yeah. I'll tend to cook uh, enough a big enough batch to last about a week mm. and so because I'm having so many meals throughout the day I can just grab a bit of this and, and reheat it mm. um, I try and reheat it in the pan because I know microwaves are the best yeah, exactly you're, you're a big, big sort of uh, pusher of that nowadays yeah um, but I used to use them when I lived with you only, only a few months only a few months ago I stopped using them it's again, really you, bad you don't know what you don't know no right? exactly you can't, you can't you know, so I, I don't live and you learn, isn't that's, it? Well, that's why I think, much like yourself, we go through a period when you first start training, for instance, of mm-hmm. sort of complete ignorance. Yeah. Um, and I suppose that's why it makes us relatable and good when it comes to good at what we do when it comes to relating to new people uh, when it comes to training. Yeah. So you can understand people's logic when they do a certain exercise or they, they do something a certain way or they mm. think that doing X will achieve Y. Yeah. Um, and, but you've just got to sort of you've got to be patient I suppose it's, exactly. it's shown me it's given me uh, I've grown a lot of patience mm. and uh, referred my my experiences back um, my own experiences to uh, to like what some of my clients are dealing with yeah. uh, in, in regards to their experiences of trying to trying to achieve a goal or they've just come to me after six months of, of trying to lose weight or get stronger or whatever it might be and sort of just Plateauing. Yes, that's and right. It's like, well, yeah, look, I've been there. Yeah, I've exactly. Been there for a long time. That's right. Yeah, everything, you just keep learning. Everything and wrong you can do, I've done it. I know, and exactly, and it works. Everyone's body functions differently, so people respond differently to different mm. foods. But I would say, you know, if you're looking to lose body fat and that's your, your main goal, then you just want to kind of um, earn your carbohydrates essentially. So if you're just having lean meats, good good quality meat like grass fed, as I mentioned, or organic or whatever, eggs, that kind of stuff, plenty of veg. Keep it simple to start with. And maybe on your training days, you could have you could you could have stuff like sweet potato, brown rice with one or two meals, and just bring in the starchy carbs on the days you're working for it, essentially. But um, before we go on too much, I wanted to mention more about uh, your style of training, mm-hmm. the way you train people. Uh, what I've noticed, and actually what I've come to gather myself, is the psychological element. Mm. Well, to anything in life, you can apply this to. But when it comes to getting in shape, getting fit and healthy, you know, the psychological element is the most important piece. And I believe, you know, a good trainer is normally almost like a therapist before oh. before they're actually a trainer, you know. And I've noticed with I'm yourself, really yeah, you're, you're kind of, um, you're a prime example of that. You know, you are very much tuned in to connecting with your clients, speaking to them and, mm. and educating them um, as well as, totally. as well as, as well as teaching them to, um, you know, to lift weights properly, obviously with good technique. I've noticed you talk to your clients a lot. You're very, 
you know you're very personal with them and um that is kind of a big part of your uh, of your style of style of training what i've gathered mm-hmm. uh, do you find that is really effective uh, the psychology uh, in terms of like delving said, into the, the uh, hit the nail on the head there man. Yeah. hit the nail on the head if you're not if someone wants to achieve any physical goal it's because there's an underlying psychological goal um, that drives them whether mm-hmm. they understand it or not Where if you want to achieve uh, a bigger butt um, a, a thinner waist uh, less shredded fat, out <laughs> want to be shredded uh, it, it's because there's some sort of not good bad like, it doesn't have to be good or bad but there's some sort of psychological driver um, that is pushing you to achieve that, that physical goal. Insecurities, basically. That's what it comes down to. We've all, we've got, and going back to how, why we started training, you know, a lot of it is stemmed from insecurities. Yeah. Go on, sorry. And, and the more you do, um, the, the more you train, it's you said, like, why you, why you start. The, it may not start as an insecurity, um, necessarily, but there is an element of that, for sure, because mm. you want to be perceived as um, someone who's typically maybe more attractive yes. than, than, than how you perceive yourself now. Yeah. So for my job, obviously my psyche self, and why I put so much emphasis on and getting into someone's head, boring into someone's head, uh, is to establish why it is they want to achieve what it is they want to achieve. Right. So one, we can find out um, like any possible... Uh, psychological roadblocks they might be yeah. sort of um, putting up um, and whether their goal is actually a, a healthy one so we, we, I want to make sure that a young female for instance doesn't want to be thin and look a certain way mm. because she's got these really negative views on how she mm. looks because most of the time people they're it's your, like you said, it's perception, isn't it? Sorry to cut yeah, you off. It's, you know it's, I mean? it's, it's, it's the the body image, isn't mm. it? So it's your own perception and mm. uh, these these deep rooted kind of um, thoughts you have about yourself and how you look and your appearance. Mm. A lot of a lot of the time, it's not it's not what other people see, and it's an internal thing, right? Mm. So, like you said, then that is one thing I've really uh, focused on now is establishing why they want mm. to get in shape. You know, is it the why is a very very important mm. question, isn't it? You know, well, a lot of the time, a lot. Of m- yeah, unfortunately, a lot of the time, if not most of the time, I've come to the realization, I came to it pretty quick when I first started PT, and I'm sure you did the same thing. You, you go into the industry bright-eyed, thinking you're gonna, you're gonna change everyone's life that you come across. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it comes down to them yes, and whether sure. they're willing uh, to change and mm-hmm. make those changes to you know, create the result they want. Mm-hmm. But if you're not addressing someone's why, like you said, yep. you're addressing the psychological issues or, or attachments or the reasoning as to why they want to achieve whatever physical goal they, they're setting out to achieve, then you're you're never actually going to get there. Mm. Right? You may actually get there. I'll strike that. You may actually get there. So if you're a slightly overweight female and you want to get down to a certain size, they'll show you an image of, I want to look like this person. Okay, yeah. great. You get there physically because you do the diet, you do the training, and you get there. How do you but, sustain it? But how That's do you the sustain most important it? But, thing, isn't it? But if you don't address the, the reasons as to why... Uh, that individual wanted to achieve that goal Chasing in the first the place yeah. um, you'll actually tell never them if they'll get there to the physical won't representation satisfied. they won't be satisfied yeah, you never and, I always and have this conversation imagine how disheartening that's going to be for the individual know, when exactly. they actually achieve the physical representation of what they wanted that's it. but they're they not still, happy they've still got the same perception they've they're, still got that not happy because body image issue essentially exactly right so uh, rather than because mo- most of your clients like my my own you get to see once a week yes right? you, you, you know personal training um, prices be what they be what they are yeah um, and the people that sort of there's only so many hours in the week we can, right. we can train people so you can see someone for an hour a week if you simply just instruct someone for yeah. an hour and, and take them through um, exercises which they could probably do themselves then one is not good for business because they're not mm. going to stick around too long because they're not learning shit and they're not going to do it by themselves. That's right. But at the same time, you're not getting deeper into their head to affect every other hour mm. of the day and every yeah. other day of the week. Yeah. So they make the right choices when it comes to food. That's you know, right. I know you, you're big on that as well. Yeah. Um, and, and affect all their training and their uh, their reasoning as to why they're so focused on their eating and their training and things That's like right. that. Because yeah. if, if I'm not at least trying to tap into the reasons as to why they're trying to achieve whatever goal they're trying to achieve I'm not doing my job that's right and it's a never ending road then because you yeah. get to, you get to the point then like I've been there myself and this is kind of one of the main uh, 
kind of drivers behind me starting up this podcast is I managed to get to a place now similar to yourself where you know you're focused on how you feel more than anything so you're tuned into your energy levels you know all mm. this kind of stuff and how you feel in your performance in the gym and all the different markers as to whether or not you know you're healthy and what happens then is you know the physique kind of comes uh, as, a, as a side effect then right and that's the that's the pl- place I got to now but I was always one of those people after being, you know, um, a competitor for so many years and stuff, a fitness uh, model competitor, bodybuilder, whatever you want to call it, you know, I was always chasing, when I was not competing, I was always chasing that physique, you know, I wanted to try and maintain this physique, mm. you know, looking at my abs every one minute, now it's like every 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, so yeah, so, and it was a never ending road and I was never satisfied and even, you know, even when I kind of got really lean and aesthetic and proportionate, it was still never enough. Yeah. When you get, the, it's, it's very hard and it sounds a bit like woo-woo, mm. but uh, it takes some time, you know. Rome wasn't built in a day. It doesn't happen overnight. But if you just trust the process and you've got a good trainer like Sean or myself and you're on your own fitness journey now, then just focus on, like Sean said, set a bit of self-discipline mm. uh, and just trying to be, you know, I'm not saying self-discipline has been being strict all the time. No, you need to all. find balance. Yeah, but you need, you need to try and focus on, you know, eating the right foods, drinking enough water, the simple things, you know, getting enough sleep. Uh, all of these things combined. Um, and then one more thing I'm going to come to now, lifting weights. I wanted to delve a little bit deeper into that. Uh, lifting weights, if you're doing that with good technique um, and you're doing that consistently, you know, you're going to gradually start building muscle and you're going to build a healthy metabolism. You're going to lose body fat and you're going to enjoy that. And that's the most important thing is enjoying the process, right? Mm. So if you're caught up on this end goal, as you just as you just brushed over then, mm. I want to get to this physique and you've got this like kind of imaginary image in your head. Mm. When you get there, you're not satisfied. And then, you know, as you said, it's just extremely disheartening and it can put you into a worse place mentally. So, you know, fundamentally, it's a case of looking after yourself most of the time and trusting the process and enjoying the process. And any tips, because I think we're going to have to wrap this up now. You're right. Any tips for the listeners as far as, you know, because I know most of them are going to want to get in shape, going to want to look good. Mm -hmm. So losing body fat, any any tips in, in terms of people who want to lose body fat and just generally, you know, get in better shape, tone up is a word that's used quite a lot for yeah. women. Uh, essentially, building lean muscle and just getting themselves into a healthier, fitter state uh, and leaner as well. Any any tips? Uh, any tips? I just say, have to say, be patient. You've got to be patient enough for what feels like a chore now in terms of exercise, um, just going to the gym and exercising. Um, and eating better, you don't have to eat amazing all the time. Yes. If for myself, healthy choices, I, I, like I, you said I earlier. Don't, I don't eat amazing all the time. No. But that twenty percent that you sort of allow for maybe processed foods or yes. maybe some ice cream here or there. It's good for the mind. Maybe, yeah. Exactly. It keeps you compliant eighty percent of the time. So you mightn't get to your goal within three months because maybe uh, hypothetically that's the shortest period of time to get your goal. Yeah. If you are one hundred percent compliant. Mm. But it takes you four months, you know, four and a half months instead of three. But you're guaranteed to get there. Mm. Whereas that three month period, you you might you might actually get there. That's right. Then then give yourself a bit of leeway. Give yourself, you yeah, know? that's right. But just as I said, be patient. Be patient enough for what feels like a chore with your with your food, with your training, with in every aspect of your um, that affects your goal mm. um, to achieve your goal. Sorry, it allow allow time for those chores to become habits. Once they become habits, they no longer become chores. It's just what you sure, do. Sure. Um, as long as you have the right guidance, you. That's it's, right. it's hard. Like I said, it's hard. You don't know what you don't know. It's hard That's to right. establish whether you're doing the right thing or doing the wrong thing. Exactly. And I hate seeing people, and I don't say hate it because it's unfortunate. I feel bad for them. People that dedicate enough time to training, you see them in the gym every day, and every they're not week, getting the results. And they're not they getting the result, getting. but they're trying. You can see they're trying hard because mm. they're just. They just don't know what they're doing. That's so, right. Um, and as a PT, I, I'm trying to run a business, so That's I right. can only give out so many free sessions trying to help people. Exactly. Um, you know, you try and do your best and with, without trying to come across too silly to, for, for, to sort of sell your services because um, there's only so many hours in the week and like I mm. said, you've got to run a business. Uh, but I'm sorry, 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 sorry to um, yeah, go for it. cut you off there. Uh, exercises, because what I was going to come to then is a lot of people, you can normally spot this in the gym, mm. right? Um, you know, when you see people doing like a leg press on, a, on an assisted pull-up machine and tying bands to machines and say, yeah. all right, okay. So you need to get the fundamental uh, exercises in place, you know, the really important exercises that will get you bang for your buck, right? Mm. So 
learning how to do things like squats and deadlifts, right, Sean? Of so the, the the you know the traditional lifts, king and queen is the way I look mm-hmm. at it. Squats and deadlifts. I know you do a lot of that kind of training, mm-hmm. compound lifts. You know, doing stuff which gets maximum results mm-hmm. and yields you the most benefits, really. Yeah. So. Any tips as far as exercises go? Would you? Would you? What's your top? Let me just say, what's your top? Say four or five exercises when it comes to lifting weights. Um, well, obviously squatting and deadlifting, like you said, king and queen. Um, and sort of, well, I, I look at I look at more movement patterns. You know, so we're, we're looking at um, a knee dominant movement. So you squat and then your hip dominant being a deadlift. Yep. The hand um, your horizontal push and pull being sort of a bench press and a bent over barbell row. Yeah. And then your vertical push and pull being, um, a, say, a standing barbell press, um, a strict press, I suppose you call it, and uh, a pull-up or a chin-up. Yeah. So you're working all main, all four main upper body movement patterns, mm-hmm. like horizontal movements and vertical movements. That's right, push and, and then, pull. And then your knee dominant and your, your hip dominant movements yes. in, in your legs. So I multi-joint like, multi joint movements, essentially, yeah, where you're recruiting also, a wider range of muscles. And... Typically, everything uh, is a derivative of one of those. So it's, it's either, you know, it's a squat or a deadlift or it's a similar... That's right. It's like yeah. a lunge. A lunge is a really good exercise. Essentially, it's a squat. Yeah, it's, <laughs> a, it's, a, it's a variation on a that. A variation, it's, yeah. It stems from that. So, That's right. So um, they're in the same sort of family. You categorize mm. them together. Mm. Um, the same with like a, a dumbbell chest press, um, a flat dumbbell press and uh, a, a bench press and, you know, a, a barbell row are. or a, um, a one-arm row or a seated cable row and That's things it. like that. They're all the same. So, so we're talking way. good, good old-fashioned, you know, uh, free weights, barbells, mm. dumbbells, and you know, going back to basics essentially, because um, you find a lot of people just get caught up. You know, I understand it. There's a lot of information out there, especially when you go on social media, Instagram, mm. YouTube, whatnot. There's a lot of great information out there. Mm. But there's also a lot of crappy information well, out there, exactly right? right. So, and the, unfortunately, a lot of the crappy information is wrapped up in really well presented ways, mm. which, which looks like uh, it comes from. Uh, a place of authority. Yeah, you know, that's right, I, yeah. I'll see. I've seen. Into the famous. I'm sure, well, I've seen. No, it's not. Yeah, <laughs> but I've seen <laughs> a lot of people, um, a lot of posts from a, a variety of sources mm. about. Uh, you see some videos on on Instagram, for instance, saying how to do this thing, like how how to do this movement or how to do this movement. This is right. This is wrong. For instance, and it's the the one that is um, the one that's uh, performed correctly is still incorrect. Um, so whoever whoever it is that's uh, putting this together um, doesn't actually know what they're doing. That's right. And with. on like that because, topic, because their video looks nice and polished and it's well presented. Yes, that's it. Um, it draws people, people like, in. Oh, and this guy's got a hundred thousand followers. And, and that's what is and another like, thing oh. is this, yeah, and that's it. And it's very clever what they do. A lot of insta famous people or people with a massive uh, following, you know, uh, the human nature, you know, novelty. It's of it's, it's part of human nature. So. We'll see something new. It looks fancy. It draws people in, especially women who want to tone their muscles. Right? Yeah. They don't want to build them. They want to tone them. People, people <laughs> suck it into that because it's always right. someone willing to take advantage of people's ignorance. That's right. Yeah. So it looks fancy. It draws people in. But the bottom line is, stick to the basics: squats, deadlifts, bench press, overhead press. Learn how to do them technically correct, and and you're on to uh, you're on the right tracks. And on that note, one more thing: yoga and mobility. Now I know Sean's routine. Yeah. Right, I used to live with him. He used to get up. He has clients at five a.m. He would get up at like four a.m. or whatever. Mm-hmm. He would do about twenty minutes of yoga. You still do that in the mornings? Well, yeah. Now I wake up at quarter to four. Quarter to uh, four. There we go. This guy's hardcore. And he'll have a phone try, roll out. He'll I be try and get in about thirty minutes, twenty to thirty minutes. It's all. It's all. It is first thing in the morning. So yeah. I'm, I'm understanding of that. I'll have a shower first. I let that sort of process wake me up. Then get the foam roller out. Rubber roller on my back. A um, lot of spinal rotation stuff. Uh, a lot of down dog things like that to get the shoulders working and yeah just whatever I feel I need um, yeah. either for the day mm. um, depending on what I'm I'm going to do or more based on how I feel from the, the previous day's workout mm. if I did some deadlift in the, the day before chances are my back's going to be a little bit tight mm. the muscle's going to be a little bit more stiff so there's probably a bit more spinal rotation stuff mm-hmm. um, on the flip side of that, um, if I was doing some squatting, I might be doing more more quad, more hip flexor um, based stretching to sort of release uh, release that stuff. So I go about my day, like you said, from five in the morning, and I can perform stuff uh, demonstrating like mm-hmm. properly. That's mm-hmm. what that's what that's I right. want to do with yeah. the first. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. and because um, I know you went, you got a few tips from uh, yoga class as well, didn't well, you? A lot. Well, that's Which right. is, like you said, it's, that's where I've it, it's yoga. Yeah, right? what exactly. And that, that's like, what the stretches I perform in the morning are yoga stretches. So yeah. it, it's just I've just collated them into my own um, little 
little sort of uh, integrated them together yeah, yeah, and just put your own stamp on it. Of, uh, of that's movements. right. Yeah. And that's that's what I've started doing recently is a lot more yoga consistently. So once or twice a week, I'll, I aim to do a yoga class. And pretty much every day, I'll do some form of uh, mobility, even if it's just 10, 15 minutes of priming before I train. And I found it has definitely changed the game for me over the last, say, it's only been over the last, uh, say, 18 months, I've really been uh, honing in on this kind of stuff and making it a priority. And um, I've built more muscle. Um, more importantly, I have much more energy. I feel much better. Um, my posture's improved a bit, uh, quite a lot, actually. And I've noticed some huge benefits from it. So uh, I would highly recommend when it comes to lifting weights, especially doing squats and deadlifts, focus on mobility um, and correct yourself first. Because if you're going to find a trainer, find a trainer who's going to, you know, who's going to correct any imbalancements you have uh, mm. and help build the, the weaker areas, which we find a lot of like the posterior chain, oh, for example, yeah. the back muscles and the glutes, bum muscles. Well, back to front is just, it's so, it's so out of whack, right? Everyone's, exactly. Everyone's tight and short and weak on the backside. Um, and the front side is just all, it's, it's not really much better. That's right. Uh, but everything's sort of drawn forward. Exactly. This is a tight, internally rotated at the shoulder, that's tight it. chest, things like that. Exactly. And, that, and, that, and that's, that's something I've noticed. So uh, most of you out there who are listening to this are most probably going to be front dominant. And you most likely are going to have somewhere in the posterior chain. So the back muscles or the bum muscles, hamstrings, maybe are going to be underactive. So the back muscles is something I would try and focus on. Um, so, so the posterior muscles, right? So stay tuned on that note. Stay tuned program, which is going to be coming out soon, my training program. And we're going to call it a day here. So Sean, if you want to... Uh, Reel off what your socials are. Um, sorry, your social media platforms mm -hmm. for the uh, audience. Oh, you can find me at uh, Apex Strength Society on Instagram. Um, I'm still working on a website at the moment, so just Instagram is uh, where cool. I'm doing most of my sort of social exposure through. Yeah, on and Facebook. I pick up a lot of stuff off your page, by the oh, way. When it comes when it comes to your lifting, and I always try and focus. So I always try and tune into you know the way you lift the weights because you, you're technically very, very, uh, very adept. So. Um, you're going to learn a lot so go check him out at Apex Fem Society on Instagram and stay tuned for my training programs which will be coming out very soon as I said at the start don't forget to give me a rating and a review please on this podcast and subscribe check me out on Instagram at Martin Silver Fitness and talking about vegetables if you're struggling to get your veg in then can you please use uh, my discount code uh, sorry I'm going, to re I'm going to rephrase that Organifi uh, products. If you uh, are struggling to get your veg in, get the Organifi products. The, the the green juice tastes amazing, and so does the red juice. Packed full of nutrients. If you're really struggling to get the vegetables in, just like my man Sean here, um, and use code Martin Silver at the checkout for fifteen percent off. And that's pretty much it. So thanks a lot, Sean. I really appreciate no, your knowledge bombs, mate. Knowledge no, bombs galore. Happy, happy to be on. <laughs> Signing out. Thanks a lot, buddy.